the incense trade route or the incense road of antiquity, see also the spice trade, comprised a network of major ancient land and sea trading routes linking the Mediterranean world with eastern and southern sources of incense, spices and other luxury goods, stretching from Mediterranean ports across the Levant and Egypt through northeastern Africa and Arabia to India and beyond. The incense land trade from South Arabia to the Mediterranean flourished between roughly the 7th century BCE to the 2nd century. The incense route served as a channel for trading of goods such as Arabian frankincense and myrrh, Indian spices, precious stones, pearls, ebony, silk and fine textiles and the horn of African rare woods, feathers, animal skins and gold. The Egyptians had traded in the Red Sea, importing spices, gold and exotic wood from the land of Punt and from Arabia. Indian goods were brought in Arabian and Indian vessels to Aden. Rawlinson identifies the long-debated ships of Tarshish, as a Tyrian fleet equipped at Ezion Jebba that made several trading voyages to the east bringing back gold, silver, ivory and precious stones. These goods were transshipped at the port of Ufa. According to one historian, in the ancient period, it would seem that South Arabia and the Horn of Africa were the major suppliers of incense, while in modern times the commercial center for the trade in gums has been Aden and Oman. Early ritual texts from Egypt show that incense was being brought to the Upper Nile by land traders. But perhaps the most spectacular evidence of this trade is provided by the frescoes dated to around 1500 BCE on the walls of the temple at Thebes commemorating the journey of a fleet that the Queen of Egypt had sent to the land of Punt. Five ships are depicted in these reliefs, piled high with treasure, and one of them shows 31 small incense trees in tubs being carried on board. The Periplus Maris Erythra and other Greek texts refer to several coastal sites in Somalia, southern Arabia and India involved with trade in frankincense, myrrh, cassa, bdellium and a range of gum resins termed juarca and cancumen and mokrotu. Among the important trading points of the incense route from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea was Jera in the Persian Gulf reported by the historian Strabo to have been founded by Babylonian exiles as a Chaldean colony. Jeru exercised influence over the incense trade routes across Arabia to the Mediterranean and controlled the aromatics trade to Babylon in the 1st century BC. Jeru was one of the important entry ports for goods shipped from India. Due to its prominent position in the incense trade, Yemen attracted settlers from the Fertile Crescent. The frankincense and myrrh trees were crucial to the economy of Yemen and were recognized as a source of wealth by its rulers. Assyrian documents indicate that Tiglath Pileser III advanced through Phoenicia to Gaza. Gaza was eventually sacked and the ruler of Gaza escaped to Egypt but later continued to act as a vassal administrator. The motive behind the attack was to gain control of the South Arabian incense trade which had prospered along the region. I.E.S. Edwards connects the Cerro Ephraimite war to the desire of the Israelites and the Arameans to control the northern end of the incense route which ran up from southern Arabia and could be tapped by commanding Transjordan. Archaeological inscriptions also speak of booty retrieved from the land of the Muunaa, possibly Munites mentioned in the Old Testament. Some scholars identify this group as the Menines of South Arabia, who were involved with the incense trade and occupied the northern trading outposts of the incense route. Aromatics from Deva and luxury goods from India brought wealth to the kingdoms of Arabia. The aromatics of Defa were shipped out from the natural harbour of Korori towards the western inhospitable South Arabian coast. The caravans carried these products north to Shabwa and from there on to the kingdoms of Qtaban, Sabah, Man, Palestine up to Gaza. The tolls levied by the owners of wells and other facilities added to the overall cost of these luxury goods. The Nabatines seized Petra which stood halfway between the opening to the Gulf of Aqaba and the Dead Sea at a point where the incense route from Arabia to Damascus was crossed by the overland route from Petra to Gaza. This position gave the Nabateans a hold over the trade along the incense route. In order to control the incense route from the Nabatean a Greek military expedition was undertaken, without success, by Antigonus Cyclops, 
one of Alexander of Macedonia's generals. The Nabataean control over trade increased and spread to the west and the north. The replacement of Greece by the Roman Empire as the administrator of the Mediterranean basin led to the resumption of direct trade with the east. According to a historian the South Arabs in protest took to pirate attacks over the Roman ships in the Gulf of Aden. In response, the Romans destroyed Aden and favoured the western Abyssinian coast of the Red Sea. The monopoly of the Indian and Arab middlemen weakened with the development of monsoon trade by the Greek through the discovery of the direct route to India, Hippolis, forcing the Parthian and Arabian middlemen to adjust their prices so as to compete on the Roman market with the goods now being bought in by a direct sea route to India. Indian ships sailed to Egypt as the maritime routes or southern Asia were not under the control of a single power. Areas around the Arabian Peninsula according to the Periplus Maris Erythrae, according to one historian. The trade with Arabia and India in incense and spices became increasingly important and Greeks for the first time began to trade directly with India. The discovery, or rediscovery, of the sea route to India is attributed to a certain Eudaxos, who was sent out for this purpose towards the end of the reign of Ptolemy Eugetes II, died 116 BC. Eudaxos made two voyages to India, and subsequently, having quarrelled with his Ptolemaic employers, perished in an unsuccessful attempt to open up an alternative sea route to India free of Ptolemaic control, by sailing around Africa. The establishment of direct contacts between Egypt and India was probably made possible by a weakening of Arab power at this period, for the Sabaean Kingdom of southwestern Arabia collapsed and was replaced by Himyarite Kingdom around 115 BC. Imports into Egypt of cinnamon and other eastern spices, such as pepper, increased substantially. Though the Indian Ocean raid remained for the moment on quite a small scale, no more than 20 Egyptian ships venturing outside the Red Sea each year. The Roman trade with India kept increasing, and according to Strabo, 25.12, at any rate, when Gallus was prefect of Egypt, I accompanied him and ascended the Nile as far as Syene and the frontiers of Ethiopia and I learned that as many as 120 vessels were sailing from Myos Hormos to India, whereas formerly, under the Ptolemies, only a very few ventured to undertake the voyage and to carry on traffic in Indian merchandise. Decline, according to a historian the 3rd century would thus appear to be a significant time in the history of the incense trade in Arabia. During the political and economic crisis of that century the nature of the trade changed dramatically. Prior to that time the incense route from South Arabia seems to have continued to function. Much of this trade seems to have been brought to a standstill by the poor economic conditions of the 3rd century, however, when the economic situation improved again under the Tetrarchy many things had changed. By this time, the two main routes in use seem to have been the Wadi Sirhan, now carrying trade which formerly would have passed through Palmyra, and Ala receiving goods from India and Arabia which before had gone to the Egyptian Red Sea ports. At the end of the 6th century Isidore of Seville enumerated the aromatics still being imported into Visigothic Spain. Of aromatic trees, De Arborus Aromaticis, Isidore listed in his Encyclopedia Myrrh, Pepper, Cinnamon, Amomum, Cardamom, and Cassa, of aromatic herbs, De Herbis Aromaticis, Nard, Saffron, Cardamom, will have arrived through the trade routes, others were available in Spain, thyme, aloes, rose, violet, lily, gentian, wormwood, fennel and others. The decline of the incense trade saw Yemen take to the export of coffee via the Red Sea port of Amokka, Egypt under the rule of the Rashidun. Following the Roman-Persian wars the areas under the Roman Byzantine Empire were captured by Khosrow I of the Persian Sasanian dynasty. The Arabs led by Amr ibn al az crossed into Egypt in late 639 or early 640s. This advance marked the beginning of the Islamic conquest of Egypt and the fall of ports such as Alexandria, used to secure raid with India by the Greco-Roman world since the Ptolemaic dynasty. Finally, the Ottoman Turks conquered Constantinople in the 15th century marking the beginning of Turkish control over the most direct trade routes between Europe and Asia. Present status UNESCO's World Heritage Committee meeting since November 27, 2000 in Cairns, 
Australia attached World Heritage Site status to the Frankincense Trail in Amman. The official citation reads, Ruins of Avdat. The Frankincense trees of Wadi Dorka and the remains of a caravan oasis of Shiz, Uba and the affiliated ports of Korari and Al-Balid vividly illustrate the trade in frankincense that flourished in this region for many centuries as one of the most important trading activities of the ancient and medieval world. The World Heritage Committee, headed by Thamba Wakash, recorded incense route, desert cities in the Negev on UNESCO's World Heritage List on July 15, 2005. The official citation reads, the four Nabataean towns of Halusa, Momshit, Avdat and Shivta, along with associated fortresses and agricultural landscapes in the Negev Desert are spread along routes linking them to the Mediterranean end of the incense and spice route. Together they reflect the hugely profitable trade in frankincense and myrrh from South Arabia to the Mediterranean, which flourished from the 3rd century BC until to 2nd century AD. With the vestiges of their sophisticated irrigation systems, urban constructions, forts, and caravanserai they bear witness to the way in which the harsh desert was settled for trade and agriculture.